Good evening beauties, happy Wednesday. <laughs> How you doing? Let's wait for a few to jump on the live. Today's discussion is on, hello. <laughs> Today's discussion is on love and romance. And uh, my guest speaker of the hour is Mr. William Washington. So let's bring you straight in, let's get into it and let's see what he wants to explore. Let's see, okay, okay. Have you been accepted in, Will? I think, yeah? Okay, okay, okay. Hello, sir. I can see you. Oh, you can see me. And you're looking good. <laughs> oh, cool. oh, thank you. Thank and you're you. looking good. You. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited. Uh, you know, when you gave me the call, I was like, I felt like I got drafted <laughs> into the NBA. Yeah, you know, I was like, ready. <laughs> That's so nice. That's so nice. I'm, well, I would. Welcome to Free Brain Thoughts and yes. hello guests who's just joined and hello Soldier Boy, Mr. Freak Nada, how you doing? Lovely for you to join us and everybody else and Fifi and everyone else coming in, coming in, come on in. Today's discussion is on love and yes. romance and the guest of the hour is Mr. William Washington himself, otherwise known as Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wawa, so before we get into the layers, Tell us a bit about how you spent your day today before coming on this live. Well, today was different for me because um, most people that know me know I'm a career critical insomniac. I, mm. I can't sleep at night. But last night, being, thinking about being on the show, I was so excited. I actually <laughs> fell asleep. That's, that, a is, that a about, is that a good well, thing? Is <laughs> Well, you know, I worked... I worked 20 something years, oh. midnight to eight. So it's just, it's just something that's keyed in me. Yeah, and I never got rid of it. But um, it was God because God let me sleep last night. I woke up refreshed. I've been up since like seven oh, wow. in the morning and I've never done that, you know, and I still feel good. So, oh, you know, and um, so I'm thankful. Bedtime. I took my day to sleep on, wait, my wow. So this early bedtime and early rising was just for me. I'm so impressed. Yeah. Thank you so much. Exactly. <laughs> No, people know me. I don't do I don't do early shows. Even when I do my own show, I'm oh. like miserable. You know, two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm in my deep sleep normally. But uh like I said, it was God because gave me the strength mm -hmm. to go to sleep last night, got me up this morning in good bed. That's so one I'm, I'm ready. And I and you can see me on the screen. You know? That's yeah, good. yeah. I had some mishaps where other features you couldn't see. Me. First you know, of all, so, welcome and yeah. I appreciate you um devoting your time to this hour. We appreciate you. I see your supporters on the live, so that's amazing. So before we get into the, I love to yeah, do oh, something yeah. called this a bit of a warm up where I get into the soul of who you are real quick. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. So let's start with who is Mr. Washington? Who is William? Well, I'm a career mm. seeker of love. You know, even when I was young, as a, as a young man, young boy, Love wasn't something I equated with because I was sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I had seizures. So the girlfriends and things like that, I didn't have. I stayed home. I was always guarded because people had to be around me to make sure I didn't have a seizure and, and fall out somewhere. So I was very uh, guarded. All throughout my teenage years, till I got about 16 years of age, I grew out of the seizures. Uh, you know, uh, an, an older woman, uh, <laughs> you know, showed me my first experience with mm -hmm. sex and everything. It's always and, the way. It was all the cougars. Cool. Ever since then, I really, oh, yeah, yeah, but, you know, we didn't know what they were cougars back then. It was my friend's, oh, my hell. best friend's mother, and um, so we didn't know, we didn't know about that back then. Ahead. back then. Yeah, but no, but listen, I, I wasn't mad at her. I appreciated what she did because I didn't have a great experience mm -hmm. with my mother. So when she took me in as a son, you know, and even though that happened, I still didn't look at her in a bad way. I looked at her in a thankful way because I didn't know how to kiss a girl. 
I didn't know how to hold a woman and uh, hold a girl. I didn't know how to even clean mm-hmm. myself properly. She taught me the etiquettes of learning how to bathe. You know, it's like so many of my girls' fathers also taught me. I don't mm-hmm. want to leave them out. But that was the first experience on how to present myself to a girl. So let, let me ask you. Question. I don't want to get too much into it as this is the warm up side of the questions, but just to fine tune the understanding. So you were a young man, a young teenager. This was your friend's mother, so she was old enough to be your mom, and she showed you your first sexual experience. Am I correct? Okay, yeah, that yes. we're gonna get into later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved every minute of it. Every every minute okay. of it. <laughs> so, um, what is your origin like? I hear you have this American accent. I know you're in stateside. Is it New York? Am I correct? Yes, New York City. Spanish is that where Harlem, your New parents York were originally from? Yes. Think? No, no, no. My family, my whole base of my family is from South Carolina, Georgetown, no. South Carolina, and other parts of the South of South Carolina. So, I have that Southern mm-hmm. church in me. But I'm nice, New York. Nice. New York you know, and how would your friends and family describe you? Well, my friends are my family. Because my family is a little dis- mm-hmm. disjointed. A lot of my family don't know each other. You know, my mother, bless her soul, she was an alcoholic. So she kept us away from my cousins and aunts because she didn't want mm-hmm. them to see her like that. So a lot of my family, as a grown man, I'm just learning who's my cousin and learning who's my uh, uncles, second and third mm-hmm. uncles and things like that, uh, aunts. So my friends have always been my family. Now, I love my sisters and brothers. There were seven of us all together, and now it's five. Uh, my youngest sister and my youngest okay. brother passed away. But um, I love them, but they don't really get into what I'm doing now. My older sister has started. Uh, she's really into what I'm doing now as a poet and as an author. Uh, nice. I'm a twin, so the brother after us, yeah, the brother after us, he's been there. Mike, Mike has always been there, support me throughout the years. But like my nieces and stuff like that, they don't really know what I do, or they know, but they don't, you know. It's, I'm just so, it's always the way, isn't it? You know, so, Unfortunately, I, I just shared this with you. It's always the way. Yeah. I'm learning to slowly not allow it to bother me, and let me explain what I mean by that. Um, what bothers me is for the longest duration of time people start to tap into you once the world recognizes you. And now for me, that's too late. And I mean that with all my heart, which means yes. it could be the yeah. same person you share a home with, a house with. I'm not saying, mind you, that because our friends or family or partners are related to us in that way, they should you know, like what we do. We could be whack, let's be honest, and they're not going to support it or promote it. However, even if you don't like it, encouragement because encouragement can create greatness if i'm not great already okay but it's fine yes. if you start seeing tv yes. and everybody knows you oh my god i knew wow wow i went to school with him no but you knew you didn't see do you understand so they gonna know you yes That's yes on, like only four of my mm. family nieces and, and things have been to any one of my shows and i performed mm-hmm. all over new york and the east coast and only four family members, I can say, actually attended one of my shows. But, you know, I know how our family yeah. makeup is, and I know the, dis- the separation that we have, so I don't mm-hmm. blame them. And a lot of my mm-hmm. nieces are much younger than I, so I'm just that old uncle that they hear I- about, that they but know about. I know about. what you mean, but I know what I'm, it's yeah, not even a case I'm, where you have to even mm-hmm. attend, but it's just, and I have that as well around me, it's just a case of once the world recognizes you, so will they. And at that point, when yes. we got the Grammy, I won't be saying thank yes. you for your support. Anyway, moving on swiftly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, moving on swiftly. Um, another two warm-up questions so I can get to know you a bit more. Uh, what thoughts keep you awake at night, if any at all? Actually, it does. You're a bit of a... Well, I can, I can actually tell you... I didn't mean to cut you off, but I can actually tell you all my life from youth to about maybe... Mm. 35. The thing that would keep me up at night was death. I was gravely afraid oh of God. death, of dying. You too. Yes. 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 It wasn't until my mother passed away, and I'm going to just say this real quick. Uh, she was in the um, hospice, and, and you know, me and my mm-hmm. mother didn't have a great relationship. But right before the hospice, when she was still able to talk, we finally broke bread and told each other that mm-hmm. we lo- I love you. That's the first time I can remember telling my mother I love you or she telling me that and 
it just happened that all my family had to leave. It was Sunday night. They had to go to work the next day. So at the hospital, everybody had to leave. Wow. It was just me and my mother. And um, I witnessed the color leaving her eyes. I, was, I witnessed her last breath. And, and that smile that came over her face, I'll never forget. They call it the smile of death, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, because they're free of pain and suffering. But I saw that smile, and it took away that night. I wasn't afraid of dying anymore. I have, I, 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 it took away the fear. I've got better. Took away took, that's, yeah, I want to do a show on fear, but yeah, wow, I'm surprised you said that. I'm very sorry you had that experience, Well, but I'm glad you, you came through it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad God, I'm glad God put me in that situation, because what if she would have passed and I never got a chance that's to tell her I love her? You know, how can I live with that? You know, and, and just to hear her say, so, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that everything worked out. I was the last one there. And um, to, to that, see that her is off. amazing. And, um, well, I have so one creepy. more. Sorry, go the, ahead. The nurse told me, I'm sorry. The nurse told me, hey, when, she, when I rang the bell that, you know, let them know what happened, she, said, she looked at me and said, go ahead, mm. it's all right to cry. But I couldn't cry. I couldn't cry. I was, I felt like I wanted to cry, but the joy of oh, seeing her God. smile. After all that stuff, it really, uh, she had throat cancer. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes. I cried in the cab home. I, cr I cried on the way home, and I cried at home. But just that moment, I couldn't cry because I realized now there was no more pain, no more suffering, mm. no more sorrow. And um, that, that Thank you for sharing that. That is so down, you know. powerful and emotive, emotional and reflective. Woo, I have one last question for you, and it's a brand new question I haven't asked anybody, which is, oh, uh, where is your favorite place in the world to be? It can even be random. It could be your room. It could be, where's your favorite place? I want to know. Don't laugh at me, but home. Right where I'm at. I knew you was going to say that. Do you hear me say, favorite. even if it's your room? I had a because feeling you were going to, very intuitive. I had a feeling it wasn't going to be a country. You were going to say somewhere in your house. Wow. How did I know? I'm basically a loner. I'm, I'm basically a loner. Even though when I'm around people, me too. I'm the life of the party. If that makes any sense. You know, yeah. So I'm Aquarius, left-handed, you know. So, yeah. <sighs> Those things, I think, I've always been a loner. I've always been outgoing when I'm around people. I don't like people see the loneliness mm -hmm. in me. They only see the outgoing. People always are, they said, William, I know you smoke. I know you get high. And for years they've been telling my best friends have said, I know you smoking something. But no, I don't smoke. I don't drink. Never got high in my life. But is that what mm -hmm. I put out to the world? I'm, I'm cognizant of. So they're only going to see me in good spirits, joke. I'm a class clown. They're going to hear me make jokes, make people laugh. But the what's inside is just for me. Yep. Oh, that loneliness is just for me. I, I don't have spread to say loneliness. to you, Will, a.k.a. Yeah. Wawa, I am already in awe of your transparency. You are my type of guest. But before I get into all that appreciation already, I'm going to save it for the end because I already know, I can already see you don't take much to put it out. And if that is, a, oh, no. I love the soul connection we're already having. So let's get yeah. into it. You want to talk about um, <laughs> love and romance. I wonder why. Firstly, guys, let me go back. William is not just Will, he's a poet, he's a storyteller, he's an off-Broadway performer, he's an author, he's everything. So naturally, um, you know, love and romance was your choice of topic. Let's get into it. Why that? Well, I'm glad that this show was it's not scripted yeah. because I didn't, the, the one time that we did talk, I didn't tell you that the flip for me is, yeah, I talk about love and romance, but it's from the perspective mm. of the brokenhearted. It's in reverse. Mm -hmm. So tonight, what I was going to discuss is that I've always been in mm. search of true love. Now, I've had many women tell me they love me. I've told many women I love them. But that love that's, that can hit me and touch me here, I haven't experienced maybe but mm -hmm. twice in my whole life that I can, I can really say it. A lot of that stuff was lip service. Yeah, baby, I love you. Yeah, oh, yeah, you love me. All right. But it wasn't that thing that made me want to yeah. take a bullet for a woman, that made me want to put my coat down on the floor so she can walk across a puddle. There was only two women in my life that I've ever felt that for. So when I say I'm always in search of love, and at 63, you would think I would I've stop searching. And I, well, today can I can I say that I have stopped searching because I have a beautiful... Can you repeat your mm -hmm. age? You just mentioned your age so freely, which I love. What's your age? Oh, oh I'm, 
I'm, I'm 63 years of age, January 25th. So can I so just I'm Aquarian. Did you say I'm an old Aquarian. 1959. 1959. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wait, but, wait, wait. Sorry, no. no I, well, I, well I, sorry. I, so I, talk, I need to digest that a minute. Because I know I've got ego <laughs> and I feel you. like I look good, but damn, you look good. <laughs> oh, no, you, you, you look, look you don't look near that black, age. Black, You're very handsome, black, number black. one, but you don't look near your age whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. But they say black don't crack. And I can honestly put that to the fact that I never smoked, drank, or got high. So that mileage is not on me. But it's on my body physically because I'm an athlete. I'm an ex-athlete. I boxed. I played football, everything. So everything is broken up and arthritic. But this, I'm blessed with, you know, the results of not putting that wow. poison in my body. I get pains like everybody else. I get, I feel it like everybody else. I feel my age. Wow. And you, what, what are the, but sorry, I have to I'm say thank that. You for this. Carry on. You look so well. You look so much younger than your age. What a blessing. But carry you. continue. <laughs> what, what, what they say, thank God. The expression is, what is the expression? Well, thank God I don't look like what mm. I've been through, something like that. I think, Me too. I think that's the expression, and that's something that I can honestly mm -hmm. be thankful for. I mm -hmm. don't look like what I've been through. And I've been through some things. So I'm just thankful all the way around because my life would be considered square if mm. you talk to another brother, you know, that did things. And I, don't know, I might be considered a square, like, oh, man, you ain't do too much in your life, you know. But for me, I'm thankful this, to this day I didn't because I see those guys that were popular when we were young. I see them now looking so bad and decrepit and cracked out and all those things. And I, I can only just keep mm. saying thank, thank you, Jesus. And I'm not overly religious, but every time I see that, I say thank you, Jesus. For saving me so let me go life. back. Let's let's go back a little you know, bit. Sorry, I knew I kind of took your track by sharing the compliment. So my bad, but I had to share the compliment, no, no. guys. Come on, yeah. But let's go back a bit. You say that. Um, Thank you. Speaking about love and romance, not from the perspective as though you've had it, but from the reverse. That's intriguing to me. But I'll tell you towards the end. Right. Um, go into that a little bit more. And in between, guys, he's going to be sharing pieces of poetry in between his story. This is going to be such a good life. Go ahead. Well, it's true that as a seeker of love, because I didn't know what love was as a young person, but I know what I was receiving, and I know it felt like love. From the, from the first woman that we can call that abuse, you know, that's what they call it now. She broke my virginity, she took my virginity, but from that first woman, I knew what love felt like. To the... To the Two or three girlfriends. I'm not talking about grown women. Girlfriends that I had back in the day. But what and may I, I ask? Because obviously she could have it been your good. mother. So you really know what that is. You've just admitted it. Okay? Yeah. It is abuse. Yeah, yeah. I need to have a disclaimer. Yeah. I have to have this disclaimer, guys. Yeah. I need to. It's, it's responsibility that I just share this moment with you if you don't mind, Will. Unfortunately, for women, for girls, if the tables are turned, fortunately, I should say, it's immediately seen as abuse. Yes. When it happens to young boys, it's praise. Yes. It's, oh, my God, good on you. Little Wayne said it best. Little Wayne said it best. Yes. He didn't see it as a He thought it was something to be proud yes. of. Again, out of, oh, if I, it was I, girls, I didn't. I didn't. that would be a court case. Again, it shouldn't matter. Right. But unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. boys are not, you know, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. it's not taken as seriously. Right. And I'm intrigued to know, when you say you saw your mama figure, who obviously had sex with you, as the first sign of love. I'm intrigued to know, without putting, because it's not a kind of lie, but how, like, interpret that for me in your way, because I already know, we know what that well, is. You know, well, we know what that is. Well, the thing was, like I said, I was there, I was there waiting on her mm -hmm. son to come back home, you know, but while I was there, she came out in a nightgown, and, and she, I had mm -hmm. never saw her like that before. So she basically um, told mm. me what it's gonna be. Uh, you know, and I was sitting there shocked. I didn't know what to say or do. Just said, no, I never had sex before. I never was that close to having Never seen a woman's body like that. It was new because that was a sheer nightgown, so I could see everything. So I'm sitting there dry mouth, didn't know what to say. And she just took my hand mm -hmm. and took me into the room. And the rest was history. Because even a blind man can figure out what to do. And I figured it out. So we had that experience. And that was the only time may we had I, that experience. May I ask it how never you happened were? Again. If you're not comfortable, that's fine in sharing that. Well, as I remember it, I was 16, mm -hmm. going on 17. Okay. You know, um, <laughs> I'm, 
you know, a friend of mine that I disclosed it to said, no, you were younger than that. But I remember 16 going okay. on 17. You know, um, and it's funny because even as a young man, I looked older. I look younger today, but mm -hmm. as a young man, I looked older. I looked older than my peers because I had a mustache in sixth grade. I had a mustache in sixth grade that I used to shave, you know, so people wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. My youngest son, Jordan, takes after me in that aspect. He's very hairy. Even at 12, he had a full mustache. But um, I used to hide it. So the times I would let it grow, women became attracted to that because they're looking at a guy who's a young mm -hmm. boy, basically, with a mustache and broken up sideburns and muscles everywhere because I was always an athlete. I always was in supreme shape. So I can understand why a woman would have been attracted to a young man like that because I didn't look mm -hmm. my age and I didn't act my age. You know, I was always here with it, so I knew how to be respectful to women and especially my you know, my friend's mother. I'm very respectful. I always call her ma'am. And I think there was something about just being in the house with me. So allow me to ask you a question that, she could that trust I'm thinking me. a lot of us are thinking. You know. Does your friend know now to this day that you exchanged that with his mother? No, no. He's, he's no longer here. He's no longer here, neither one of them. But um, I would never, I, I could never tell him that. No, no. He probably would have kicked my ass too, so I would never thought well, about he, telling him. You know, he was a big guy. I'm only five eight. I've been five Jerry eight, Springer show. Mm. So he would have kicked your ass, and I would have beat her ass. But that's another show. <laughs> yeah. yeah? <laughs> but, you, but you know how, I, and I know how you feel. I know how you feel. But as a young man, it was like a oh, an you, awakening sure. for me because yeah. who else would have taught me how to? Who else would have taught me how to have safe? clean and pure love or sex. Mm. Let's call it sex. If I would have learned from some girl in the street, I probably would have got her pregnant. Or I probably would have caught mm. an STD. So I had somebody who was smart enough to tell me about protecting myself, jimmies and wearing caps and all that. I didn't know those things. So I had somebody who taught me how to be clean myself before you were a woman. Because I was smelling like hot mess. I just got <laughs> to playing basketball. So, you know, those things that she showed me how to do. And I appreciated it because even like the elders, the older men that taught me how to wear cologne, how to uh, tie a tie, I appreciated that to this day for the, those elders who taught me the things that would help me in life in the future. Because I didn't have a father. I didn't know who my father was. Never had a father figure in my life. So who was going to teach me if not her? I hear you. Thanks was not the for hearing elder. that. So... so how about we pause here for a very, very short while, checking in with my viewers. Guys, are you with us? If you're enjoying what we're yes. discussing so far, throw up some love hearts. And in the meanwhile, whilst you're doing that, Will, how do you feel about introducing your first poem in between us having a heart to heart in this conversation about love and romance? Oh, thank you, thank you. If, if love mm. is love, and if love is for me, I would imagine that love mm. looked just like you. But if I could touch you with my hands, I would first touch your heart. And from there, I would touch your mind and rip happiness and heartbreak apart. You see, happiness cannot exist with heartbreak attached to it. I would touch you in the places you needed to be touched, as well as the places you want mm. me to touch. I will cup your mountains and flow my hands down the curve of your spine, palming your apple bottom behind. Where are you? Where can I find mm. you if I needed you? Are you waiting for me at some faraway place? Or you stare me right in my face? If I can touch you with my hands, I would dig through the desert sand in search of a single grain of you. At night, I would whisper your heart to sleep. My touch will awaken you in the early morn, sing you an evening love song, then eagerly awake the edge of night in vain, so that I may whisper your heart to sleep again. Where are you? Where can I find you when I need you? God, if the night be too dark, mm -hmm. give me the moonlight. If the morning sun be too bright, Lord, send in the clouds to take away the light. Lord, Father God, if I be blind, please give me sight, so that I may see her, kiss her, hold her, love her, so that I may be queen her. A woman. Where are I'm you? here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that was so beautiful. Yeah, oh my God. So that was so, so nice. <laughs> oh my God. I felt that. That That's was an old amazing. Your performance you. is like, oh my God. Oh. That was amazing. Thank you. But that's an 
that's an old poem that all my friends know. That's my staple uh, poem that I do, you know, if I'm talking about romance. That was the first really love poem that I've ever written, you know. Let me tell right you. There. Words are one thing, but when it comes off the page, it's another. And let me tell you, every single word, yeah. I am 100% convinced that that was just from the soul, not even the heart, the core, the room. That was so yes, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. First piece of thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, no, don't worry about it. But broken heart, you know, and I say broken hearted, like I said, and I must say this because she gets mad at me when I don't. I, I'm in love. I have a beautiful, That's lovely beautiful. Latina goddess. Oh, God. Me, just for me. So I, I oftentimes forget to mention that. I was just going to say to you, me, but, um, are you yeah, speaking so. from a single or married perspective or past tense? With what, right. No, no. No. No, I'm... I'm, I'm 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 not single. I'm dating. We're we're, so we're in love. Her. But um, she understands mm -hmm. that as a poet, she understands that as a poet, spoken word artist, that I still need to have my of individuality course. when I'm talking to women, when I'm doing these poems. And she's gracious enough to stay on the side. Most times when I do my show, she's sitting right here by the kitchen, or she's somewhere near. And she um she's not in the poetry or, or social media, so you know I had to of get course. used to that. But she gives me that Absolutely. space to breathe and do what I do and do That's what I do. That's a beautiful love. thing. Support is a beautiful yeah. thing. And yeah. obviously, performance and passion and writing and poetry, I love it all. So, love and romance. Would you say that you are a, a romantic person yourself? And if so, what is the pity of romance to you? Yeah. Well, yes. I, I've always been a, a love sick dude, you know, always. Uh, looking for love or saying lovely things to the ladies because that's what I was taught to do. The elders taught me to him. But the thing is, like, an uh, old guy told me a long time ago, he said, oh, William, love is like, love is a car. Say, love is like a car, a vehicle. But romance mm, is the mm, engine. Mm, mm, mm. You know, you can't have love without that thing that stimulates and, and, and creates the love. So I've always remembered that. So I can say, oh, I love you. Or I can be with a woman and we've been together for a while and say, I love you. And if she asks me, why do you love me? I have to remember that that romance is the engine. So I have to be ready for that question at all times. A man should always be ready for that question that a woman will ask you. When you tell him you love her, she's going to ask you, but men why do you ask love me that. Men ask the same question. I think that's also empowering. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of men falter because they stumble. They can't. They never thought to answer that question. They said, "Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, you look good. Oh, uh, you, uh, you got a nice body." That's not what a woman. But you know what it is. That's the thing, though. Us ladies, it's not about what we want to hear. It's about accepting what comes out. You ask a question, we should be willing to accept that person's truth. And I was once told that when I asked that question yeah. in the beginning, oh no, the question was uh, in regards to attraction and the chemistry and what is it you liked. And the gentleman said, there's things I can say to you, Silver, but if I told you what the magic was, if I knew it to the core, it wouldn't be magic. And that was enough for me. Because I, I, I understood, I overstood what that meant. Yeah. There's that thing, there's that thing sometimes, yeah, that, it's, just it's that love. thing about somebody. Love mm. is never logical. Uh, Glenn Jones wrote, the singer, R&B singer Glenn Jones wrote, once wrote, Love has a mind of its own. It comes at the strangest time. Sometimes mm. it takes control. You try and try, but it won't let you go. And I always remember those words. Mm. You know, love has a mind of its own. You know, when you see somebody that you just know, that's the one, that's the engine, that's the stimulation that attracts you to that person. But once you meet that person and get to know that person, so yeah. when you say you the one, you're, you're we're living in a century where there's many ones. It's not like back in the day when we had the black struggle of love. Let me get into it a little bit, yeah? We are in a time where people are very disposable, um, people are easy to come, and people are easy, easy to go, all right? We talk about a lot in the sense of, oh, it's not like how our parents used to be. I keep saying to people, my parents, for example, met in a different generation. My grandparents met at a time where it was one room, six kids in one, you know, in one room and a curtain around each bed. That's the black struggle. It's a different time. You never had like Tinder and POF and dating apps. So when we say 
that's the one in this day and age there's many that's the ones and that's why soulmates can come in friendships soulmates are so accessible but having a twin flame was a deeper thing than having just a soulmate you understand the difference yeah. Yeah. Well, well that's why today and i'm not, I'm not yeah. talking to people up today but that's why a lot of relationships don't grow because Remember, we had to do everything manual, whether it had been playing sports or going outside and play. We didn't have Xbox, Playstations, right. and things like that. And um, back in our time, people did things like that. You had people that smoked their weed back in the day. But like in today's world, so many of the young people that I talk to or counsel, and um, first thing they say, man, oh, I met this girl. We smoked a blunt, a blunt or a sniff, whatever they call it. And it was like, that was it. Like, they, they, they was like, they, they fell in love lit. after smoking the a blunt. The chemistry crazy. I mean, that's yeah, why. Yeah, got lit. That that's, the that's blood it. will take you for the next that's vibration. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, but what is, to me, I'd be like, because I'm old, old-fashioned. I'd be like, what is that? We had to earn a woman's respect back in my day. We had to court them. They call it now courting, talking, dating them. Exactly. We had to mm -hmm. come. Yeah, and, and do all those little things like pull her chair out, open the door for her, and then know what side of the street to mm -hmm. walk on when you're walking with her. The man should always be on the curb, to the curb. But today, these young people, they don't get that. And it's not their fault. They don't have but the allow me to, to say, I, was I mean, my son's in his yeah. 20s. When we're playing to young people, that's what I see, 20s, 30s. For me, I'm in my 40s, and they still yeah. don't know it. I meet in their 50s, and they still don't know it. So sometimes... Yeah, you know, maybe you have that gentleman um, ability and you have that romantic and, and, you know, sense of you. But a lot of people who has gone through the mill, even at our age groups, yeah, who's gone for it, they, you know, yeah. dated, married, divorced, dated, married, divorced, married, not divorced, and still dating, whatever it is. Yeah. Almost like they feel like they've done yeah. it a thousand times. They don't want to keep doing it. So therefore, it is a case of, do you want to just Netflix and chill? And that's what kind of is, really has perished the courtship. There's not a lot of effort in it. People want a microwave mm -hmm. relationship. Literally, in the microwave, 60 yeah. seconds, and if that ain't the case, they're gone. Yes. Can I, can I say one thing? I don't want to be remiss or take us off the show, but I have to thank some people that's here because they were influential in turning oh, me into it. a love me poet, too. where before mm -hmm. I was a very angry, progressive poet. We have Mr. Oh uh, Bernardo Hi. Taylor Hi. and Brother Romeo Donati and Brother, and brother Ro Romeo Donati in the house. I'm looking for the other cat, but I don't see him. But those two brothers were one of the first two poets that I got acquainted with that did that romantic thing or... In the Flanado's case, he was fire with the erotic, and I mean, he was amazing. And so was Romeo. Romeo's a, a romantic, Romeo Donati is a romantic poet. You hear me, everything that comes out of his mouth, because he has the voice, that deep baritone voice. So everything comes out, it's a slow, romantic flow. I'm and I appreciate him. Me, so I can invite you I on the show. But let me say, thank you to everyone that's here. Yes. However, yes. I know Flanado for yes. a long time now. He is amazing. Both performer, writer, person, yes. energy, everything. So thank you once again. And he's been very supportive over the years. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And as for the other gentleman, well, I don't know him, but I want to well, get to know. Hit me up, inbox me, let's get you on the platform. I already I already yeah, told him what to do. I already told him what to do. But real quick, those brothers taught me how to those brothers mm. taught me how to breathe. How to say, William, let it go. They said, William, talk about the things that they knew I was about. They knew that I had it in me to do. I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to get on the screen, people seeing me, and talk about that mushy stuff. That's how I used to think. I'd rather get on there and scream Black Power and F America and them, things like that. You know, um, things that were in my first book, we won't talk about that today. But, <laughs> you yeah, can't talk about your guys, first book. <laughs> those guys, yeah, those guys taught me how to let it go. Let those emotions out. And share it with the world because they may be broken love pieces, but, but they are mm. still love pieces. And people need to hear it. Everybody can't be the most romantic. So I try to, I try to talk to the broken hearted. That's my but whole thing. I'd like to theme. ask you about my whole a new now, relationship. You know? In all honesty, do you still feel broken hearted? That may seem like a funny question to people, but no, you can actually be in new relationships, marriage and everything, and have children and still feel that fracture. That has been there for a lifetime. So I really would love to ask no. you that question. Do you still feel that sense of... Uh, uh, absolutely not, in terms of me.
Well, but my goal in life, poetically and socially, is to mm -hmm. talk to those mm -hmm. who may be broken or who have gone through them things. Because the whole thing is not just about expressing mm -hmm. brokenheartedness to them. It's actually mm -hmm. to stop abuse. So I talk to the men and tell them, instead of striking out at a woman, take mm -hmm. two minutes to breathe and to, to realize That's it's sweet. better to walk away. So even though I do broken hearted pieces, not all, but you know, the majority mm -hmm. when I perform on stage, the goal is to stop a man or uh, uh, help a man who's been broken not strike out, mm -hmm. to not strike out against a woman. Because if I can heal, so can you. If I can live to uh, forgive, mm -hmm. so can you. But sometimes men need a man to, to say that. A woman can say that and a man be like, oh, you just, uh, please, you're just talking your point of view. But when a man talks to another man and can tell him, I've been through what you've been through. Mm -hmm. I've cried at night. I've shivered. I wanted to kill somebody. And when I can tell them that, it touches and a some of these places. experiences you've had, allow me to ask was, you, is that from previous relationships that so you've had these aftermath feelings, yeah? Well, not, not when I was young, but okay. um, I've been married okay. twice. And both of them. Yeah, both of my marriages okay. lasted almost 20 years. The second one was 20 years. The first one was 19 and some days. That's a long remember marriage. Stuff like that. okay. But um, the, the first marriage, I, I screwed up because I had money. I was a player. I, mm -hmm. I didn't respect my wife. And even though we've been married that long, she couldn't have children. So and I was out there working, doing all that things. So I got away with a lot of stuff. But when, it finally hit, when shit hit the fan, I, mm -hmm. I had no answers for her. I couldn't tell her why I did those things. I couldn't tell her, you know, about the child that they said was mine from another woman. I couldn't tell her mm -hmm. those. I couldn't explain it. I hurt her. And that hurt me so bad that I hurt her. But she could not. She was mm -hmm. very strong. Trinidadian woman from Trinidad and Tobago. And she told me, mm -hmm. I love you, but I got to go. And that's the first mm -hmm. time a woman ever told me that. I didn't know how to react, but I didn't, I didn't bug out. I was good. But I, in the back of my mind, I knew oh. Carmen was going to get my black ass. As soon as I got older and fell in love again right after that and right into the pot, mm. I fell in love with a younger woman. Okay. I was nine years older than she was. And everything I did, everything I did to my first wife, mm, mm, she did mm. to me. And um, I, I, I could not handle it. I, I was in the hospital on a 72-hour mm. mental hold, psychiatric hold. And um, once I got past that, that's when poetry yeah. came in you know, first it was God, yeah. and then poet, prayer and poetry that saved my life. That got me I'm back. so grateful. Okay. Yeah, wow. So, oh, you're grateful. Because I was a kook for those, for those weeks leading up to that. I was out of my mind. I was walking the street, talking to myself, threatening people. Mm -hmm. And that's not me at all. But the, from being hurt for the very first time, knowing that my wife was with another man, it blew my mind because I never mm -hmm. had that experience. And it was somebody that I knew, uh. that I know. It just blew my mind. It just, it just, it took me from normal William to how long did crazy it take you to overcome That's that? What I mean, it. do we call it a mild breakdown? Do we just call it a low vibrational stage, whatever you want to name it? I mean, how long did it take you to overcome that stage? It was, it was a, it was a, mm -hmm. it was a severe breakdown at first, but I never sought help from it for it. I was just walking around disheveled, looking crazy mm -hmm. and acting crazy. But then when I when realized that no. I started to pray, started to, and I never knew how mm. to pray. I wasn't a church person, but somebody told me I should pray, and so I started praying and, and got the strength to take myself to the hospital. They didn't come get me. I took myself, and um, they, they helped me out for those 72 hours, <laughs> and I was able to write when I was in there. I was able to write, and that therapy was amazing for me because when I got out, I realized I never want to be back there. But after two I don't days, be on no medications. Back to I don't want to yourself ever. psychologically and spiritually. Oh, sure. I mean, right after that 72-hour hold, I was new. I was made anew. And um, I got myself together because I always had money, so it wasn't a hard transaction, transition. I got a new apartment, mm -hmm. a studio pad, things like that. You know, well, actually, first I was living in the, um, mm -hmm. where I was living with my wife in the projects. But um, <clears throat> after that, you know, things just turned for the best. I learned poets. I met poets. I started going on mm -hmm. Facebook. I didn't know what Facebook was. And I started meeting people and seeing people and hearing poetry mm -hmm. on these shows. It blew and my very mind. Good. And I knew I had a story wow. to tell. So, allow me to ask you, well, you, you said that you've been married twice. Um, would you remarry a third time? What's your thoughts? 
Oh, no, hell to the no. Oh, no. No. And um, I talked to my lady friend about that. Now, we, look, she's a year older than mm -hmm. me. I'm 63. She's 64. And we've been friends. We've oh, been wow. friends for over 30 years, That's 30, 40 amazing. years. I've always known her. Mm -hmm. I've always known her, you know, but mm -hmm. we just never got together together. You know, um, so it was an easy transition, but she, we, we're such, mm -hmm. we're so compatible to each other because we're not only friends and lovers, we're also each other's caretakers, wow. so, so to say. Because when, when my legs were fractured, or uh, when I had my prostate mm -hmm. issue, she was there for me. Now she's going through her thing. She had double hip surgery, hip replacement surgery. So mm -hmm. I'm the, I was there for her. And so we've always been there for each other, but now we can that's say we are so each beautiful. other. And that's where that love that's thing so comes beautiful. in. Thank mm -hmm. you. But that's where the love comes in. That's when the love comes in. Uh, be good mm -hmm. for each other through the bad times. And when that good time comes, you know it's love. I don't have to ask her a question about her. I know everything about her. She knows everything. If she sees a look on my mm -hmm. face, she knows I'm in pain. She'd be like, Poppy, Poppy, sit down. I got this. Let me, let me put a hot rub on you or let me do this for you and, and vice That's versa. I know when she's not feeling I'm so right. happy that you found each other in that way. You've always known each other. And sometimes it does take us to live outside of what's in front of us. Sometimes it's like that. Lucky for you guys, yeah. the universe allows you to still intertwine. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. It's, it's, like I said, the words to that song, song I live by. Love has a mind of its own, and it comes at the mm. strangest times. You just, you just don't know when love is going to come. Love is, an, uh, love is an entity that you cannot define, really, and you cannot predict when love will come. You can't say, well, next year on my goal for New Year's, I'm going to fall in love and meet somebody. You so can't, now I'm going to ask you, that. as an individual, you can't man, write and this is only individual, mm -hmm. and it's only an opinion, because obviously you cannot, one size does not fit all, Yeah. In your opinion and experience, maybe even observation, how do you know when someone you found the one, whether it's the one for right now, the one for the season, the one, in your opinion, this is about love and romance. Uh, if, if you used to give someone advice um, in terms of knowing when they found the one, what would you say? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, one thing. Complicated passion. That's the other guy. He's in the oh, house. Oh, I know Darkman Blues. Blues. He's also I think he's a been one of I had an entertainment night. Yeah, I believe he was on it. I'm sure he was. Well, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. He, he's been on your show. He, he's one of the guys that inspired Wonderful. me to do what I do now. But, um, you know, love, I, like I said, love is that, that entity. I don't even know if you can call it a feeling because a feeling is more like just an, uh, mm -hmm. an, an intuition. But love is that thing that makes you stop. It gives you pause. That makes you, oh, shit. When you see it, love is that. That's how it starts. And then the finished product is love. So all that mm -hmm. romance that we talked about, first it starts with friendship, romance. And it might be just a second that you first meet and see each other and say, but the romance, the building up of that will make the love. Love should never come before a romance, before the, you know, putting up the cart before the horse. I think it should be that relationship building and that romance, hopefully, and then, and then love. If, it, if you think it's the other way around, you're not in love. Interesting. All right, so let me share some bars with you. I asked you the question, you gave me an answer, and I accept it. That's lovely, because I can see it's from your perspective you've lived. On the flip side, I don't think it can be engineered like that. Let me explain what I mean. Many people say of all generations, oh, you can't control who you love and you can't. Here's the thing. Personally, and from observation also, you can't control the chemistry you instantly feel when you see someone. But I can control and engineer who I love. Absolutely. In order for me to love you, I have to spend time with you, and that's a choice. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes, me guys. Yes, yes, All yes. for me to be yeah. loving you in the first place, I had to have made a choice of spending time with you. Unless we're talking about that one-off thing that some people have, which is love at first sight and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. other than that, chemistry, walking right. down the street or being at work and you have a chemistry connect or energy exchange unintentionally, that's very different. But love, not the same as yeah. Uh, but you know, it's like making cake. Love is not it's the like same as being in love. That's yeah. two different yeah. things that can fix up into twine. Yeah. I can be in love with yeah. you and not love you. 
and I can love you, I could be in love with you. If you got both at the same time, you're good. Yeah, but yeah, and but a lot of people don't have that. So sometimes we have to build. Yeah, that's yeah, like, what I mean. One side we build in each other. In terms of how the mechanics of it all. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're absolutely right. See, I mean, some people can take the opposite of what you absolutely. just said, and it works for them. Some people can take what we're saying, and it, it, it might not work for them. But and that's why I said it just comes at the strangest time. Leon Walker in the house. I thank you. All these hey, people on the phone. Everybody's in the house today, <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate all of them. Man. Yes, uh, Eli uh, Burian, all these people. Bill, I appreciate you. Are you ready for another, another, another piece for us in between our conversations? That slowly wind down. Okay. Okay. Let me let me do this. It's, it's kind of new, so mm -hmm. I don't always remember it the same way. But it is the dedication to my lady, Go the love it. of my life. Um, she call, <clears throat> excuse me. She calls me her beautiful black man, albeit a victim mm -hmm. of a broken past. From her love and her words, mm. I ran. From the first kiss right up to the last, I was not man enough to stand up to my past. I saw her the other day before she saw me, and again I ran. But lacking the faith of a mustard seed, I allowed my past to intimidate me. My past mm. called me ugly. My past broke my heart and she used me. I was married to my past. I was victimized by my past. I was hypnotized by my past, a victim to her luminous ass. Mm. God save me. Give me the strength to break free of the chain that binds me. Lord, send me my earthly angel. But in the meantime, in between time, I wish I could fuck your mind. It's your intelligence for me. Travel north of your big toe up between your thighs. It's the taste of honey for me. Massage your feet, your ankles, your calves, your thighs, your ass. Massage your hips, your waist, your breasts, your shoulders. It's your mm. silhouette for me. Massage your jaw bone, your lips, your nose, your eyes, your ear, your hair. It's your soul mm. for me. I wish I could fuck your mind to know if you'll always be in love with me. I wish I never met my past, but my past is who she is and who she will always be, my past. Woman, you are my today. Woman, you are my tomorrow. Woman, you are my everything, my lovely Latina goddess with five first names, Carmen, Sandra, Maria, Celeste, Maribel, Hernandez, the she who calls me her beautiful black man, Woman, you are my one last chance mm. for love. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Impulse. That took my breath away, literally. I'm parched. I'm going to need some water right here. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I need some, too. That always Lord, do it to Lord, me. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not good early in the day. I wow. gotta excuse me, people. I don't have it. Going on. <laughs> what are the What are the emotions flowing through you as you recite those words? Because obviously, each time is going to be different, and it's a very new piece. How do you feel in this moment? Well, I I feel a sense of of mm. gratitude that she's in my life, because the funny thing about it. And I, anybody could tell you this about me. And, and most poets know what this is about. But I could write a love poem to a total stranger like mm -hmm. this, like nothing. But then when it was time to write that love poem for her, Cause it, was it took me a minute. Even though we're in love and I love her, I could not find the words to make a pretty metaphoric poem. You know how these guys do that so great at it? Mm. I couldn't do it. So I had to stay within myself, my suffering, my sorrow, my victory, my redemption, and still write about love and write about her mm -hmm. and what she's done for me. At the same time of telling her my past fears, why I couldn't write a love poem for mm -hmm. her at first. I couldn't do it. It took me like a month to write her a love poem. And she was nagging at me. I right, Poppy, you write to everybody else, but you don't write to me? What the fuck? She was like really going off, you know? And I, I couldn't tell her that I'm afraid to do that because... I couldn't find the right words for her. She meant everything. It's going to be organic. 
So I don't want to lesson her. That's not an assignment. Uh, professional yeah. got to be organic, and you did yeah. come up with something. And I'm sure with your, you have a lot more to write. And I didn't want to let them. I didn't want to lessen my feelings. I didn't want to lessen my feelings for her, not knowing that I'm a simple man who <laughs> writes simple poetry. So I couldn't find all these fancy metaphors that I wanted to use. But so I just had to tell my story and tell her why that question again. Why mm. do I love her? And and that was that. Thank piece. you. So that piece told her why well, listen, I love her. Before we wind down this final hour, I have two more questions for you. The next one's going to be a surprise to you, and the question is, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I know you do. I do. So it's the um, third time I've got any guesses. When I feel I do, it, I always ask it. What do you want to know, Wawa? What, what, what drives you as a woman mm. in this industry? And I'll say entertainment industry. What drives you and, and gets you up this every right day to here. do okay. what you do? All right. Firstly, let me get into that a little bit about taking over your life. I had a feeling that you wanted to ask me something. I can always feel it pulling up my core. And so here's, here's my response to that wonderful question. I grew up in a mixed culture background, Dominican, Jamaican. To this day, a very solid, firm house. Never had the lights cut off, never received a red bill, never, just solid. But what I thought was absent was emotional and verbal connectivity. And so I grew up as a young woman who wanted to be a therapist. I studied half of it. I still get to decide to go back and complete it. But my goal was to always allow and invite people to, um, to open up, to express in any way that they wanted to. When I was young, I didn't have all these big words. I just knew I want to be the person that people can talk to. And I want to be a therapist. And I want to be there for the youth. And I want to be there for... So that was the beginning. That was the birth of... <laughs> not feeling like I, I had someone to talk to. I, had, and I, mean, I grew up with like five brothers and, you know, two sisters and although some are half, big family, but I still felt alone. That loner that was always popular, but still a loner, like yourself, yeah? And then as I grew and done more bits and pieces with working with people and allowing myself to be open to people to where they could speak to me on a level, I then decided in 2019 that I wanted to go into radio. Lockdown happened, etc., etc. And I thought, you know, I'm going to open up my own Instagram page. I don't care how long it takes to build it, but I want to create something called Free Flowing Thoughts and actually capitalize on just that. And my main drive at this age and stage, as I understand um, what I'm doing now, is soul connectivity. Yeah, and so I'm going to continue to yes. grow with different yep. platforms, different things that I'm building and hoping that God continues to understand my purpose. I'm a woman of purpose. And even of all the small numbers I have, sometimes I'm like, oh, no one's paying attention and no, I'm not getting the support. But no, I'm driven by soul purpose. I'm driven by soul connectivity. Everyone that comes on here yeah. is for a purpose. And I have a spiritual yes. orgasm every time I do a show. Mm. I hope I've answered your question. You know, yeah, yeah. More, and I want to put it out there that I also host mm -hmm. one on poetry and Entrepreneur Wednesdays. So if we can get you on either one of those shows, I would love Let's it. Do I it. would be thrilled to have Let's it. Let's do it. You know? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so, that, that'll be great. Like always, like always, send me that short bio. We'll make it happen. Photos. We'll chop it up after the show. Happen. But yeah, guys, so... I do this and will continue to do things of this nature in different areas. If my, I'm led by my gut, I'm led by my root chakra, I'm not led by my heart or my mind in these stages. I ain't because, you know, by now they've given up. A lot of people are lucky to have teams and management. I don't have any of that. So I'm a one woman, you know, one woman band for now, and I'm driven by soul connectivity. And my people, yes, especially yes. when it's my platform solely, um, anything that I do, invite people to just be. We're living in a world where we are orchestrated to be everything but ourselves. It's ridiculous. And we buy into it. Crazy, we buy yes. into it. Visually, yes. look, whatever it yes. is, persona, yes. clout, whatever. And so, like today, someone said to me, I've got someone who is this, who is that, who's, who's done this, who's that for your show. I said, I'm not interested in what they've done. I'm not interested in their um, degrees or 
um, what they've done for the community in terms of that's not a qualification I need to have someone come talk to me. I don't care if you are the man sleeping on the street. You've got a story to tell, I want to hear it. And if you want to say that yeah. to me, they weren't the right person yeah. to be on my show. I, I'm you. Yeah, so this is, you know, you I say am, you're not a poet, poet, but you speak so poetic. <laughs> poetic. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you speak, I know. you speak so poetically, mm -hmm. just in your regular, mm -hmm. you know, it's amazing. I'm a creative, so it's amazing. I call myself a creative yeah. writer. And I want to say, let me get it right, because I don't want to restrict myself to just that. But yeah, I'm a creative writer who's on a bit of a break, and I'm just nurturing other sides of me. But I'm a very poetic so absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I feel it already. So, I mean, it's a kinship with, with poets. It's mm -hmm. a poets and writers. Mm -hmm. It's a kinship that we feel when we when we find out each one of us does what we do. We do what we do, you know. And it's a kinship that develops. And that's why I have so many people that love and respect I love me. And respect and I love and respect you. them. Absolutely, so, already. The middle, but I have one more question before we close your life. And thank you for that question. I appreciate you. Yeah. As we wind it down, guys, I'd like to ask Will, otherwise known as Wawa, well, well, one more question. And we call it after, it's like afterthoughts, basically. After every show, I like someone to kind of, uh, I like my guests to express how they felt being on this platform with me. So what's your thoughts? What are your afterthoughts? How was it for you today on Free Flame Thoughts with me? It's, it's, it's very, you know, being here today is it's, mm -hmm. it's very important to me. And my and my life's quest so now beautiful. to express that love that we talk about, that broken love in my case, and the romance, and the victory. More importantly, mm -hmm. the victory from a broken heart. Mm -hmm. The redemption. If you've been a man that did women wrong, you can be redeemed. So this is so so, uh, so awesome for me to be on your show today because I can mm. serve my purpose while I'm on your show, enjoying you, enjoying you visually, mm -hmm. and then enjoying your mind mm -hmm. and on your spirit. I can still get my point out and what my goal is in life right now. You know, and a uh, real quick plug, because I always we, forget. No, we're going to get into that. Please, bring, please book, now bring both book. your books up yes. and explain and express what they're both about. Let's get into it. Okay. Real, oh, okay. I'm, I'm getting ready to pull up somebody else's mm -hmm. book. I buy so many books. I support my poets. Now, this was my original book, my premier book, the first book brought in 20, mm -hmm. I mean, published in 2012. I'll just say the N-word chronicles, the mispronunciation <laughs> of who I am. Respect for your show. And um, that book was that angry book. That was right after the 72-hour hold. That was right after the mm. things I was going through. And my, mm. my redemption, my, my forgiveness, you know, being able to forgive. And it's a, it was an angry, mm. angrily written book, you know. Uh, but it did so well. And it showed me mm. my path poetically because so many people brought the book and I'm not just talking about our people. I'm sure. I'm talking about white yeah. folk. I don't, know because, I don't know because of the title, but a lot of it was me performing a year before the book came out, doing those pieces, which were very educational pieces. Don't go by the name of the book. Those pieces were very educational, very spiritual, very romantic, but they all had one thing in common. You might find the word, name, title, slur, niggas mm -hmm. somewhere in that poem. And I, I, like I said, I explained why, but, you know, and the second book, this is my healing book. This is a, a buffer book between Chronicles 1 and 2. This book is titled The Broken Book, Love Given, mm. Love Taken, Love Lost. And that's about that. And this whole book is about 10 characters. I have 10 characters in the book. I'm, I'm number 11. Mm -hmm. I'm the star. I'm the main character. But I talk about their brokenness. It could be broken is it, is romance, it broken love. Huh? It could be broken life. Oh, yes, poetry and nice. uh, novel type. You know, um... It what it does, like I said, it mm -hmm. talks about the broken and how they express their brokenness. You know, and it's done in the stage type writing. There's no page nice. numbers on wow. this book, in this book. Everything is act, act one, act one mm -hmm. through act mm -hmm. seven. And I like then the that. final uh, curtain call. So um it's like a play. It's like you're reading mm -hmm. a play about brokenness, basically. And um so like I said, at the end of the book, the characters, I tell you what the characters are doing today. And um and I'm just so proud of this book because it was not meant to be such a successful book early. It's very what successful. Do you mean I wrote it this April, be? and it's been doing very well. You said it wasn't meant to be? Uh -huh. Well, I, I, I just wrote it as a buffer between The Chronicles 1, and I have something coming out titled nice. The Chronicles 2. Uh, now, The Chronicle 2 doesn't have the N-word, and it just says The Chronicle 2. But it's definitely uh, the second part two of this book. 
Um, so I wanted a buffer book in between. I wanted something that wasn't angry or political, so to say. I just wanted something to express more my feelings and the people that, because everybody else, those 10 characters, I know. I knew. I just changed their names for, you know, for, uh, a lot of them have given me the grace to write mm -hmm. about their story. So, you know, and, and it's, it's like I said, it was a blessing. I didn't think it would do well. I just wrote it to get it out and get back into to the flow. Because I wrote the manuscript in 2014 and didn't get it out to now because of life. I started touring. I started doing other things. Got locked out of my laptop. And I was like, bah, I don't need that. I got a tablet and a phone. So I didn't, I didn't think about it. But the pandemic mm -hmm. made me remember to get old things fixed. I had time. I'm sitting in this place with time on my hand. So I took care of the old things that wasn't finished. And the, my laptop was one of them. And I realized that I had the manuscript needs Make to come it. out the book. And how's it doing? That's that, what I did. Your last one. So how's it doing? Well, listen. Listen, I want to I thank my poets that's on the screen because wow. most of them have the book. Romeo Donati brought about mm. uh, seven books. You know, that's how inspired he was. And um, he'll be selling them at his shows because he also hosts okay. romantic shows. He'll be selling the books there and, or raffling them off, however they do it. But um, all my poet friends took care of me, and that's not even talking about the outside. So, you know, the outside world lo loves my stuff. They've been waiting for me to write again, and they finally got it. So I've been blessed. I've been blessed. That's I'm going to take that money and tour, get out of New York City for a little while, and, um, you know, just Well, I'm just excited enjoy it. for you. You've got not, so much gifts and passion and dedication and yeah. uh, going on i love your i mean even though when we go through things the narrative is not always easy when we're going through the pain and the trauma but i love the the gift at the end of your narrative what you've been through this is the gift it's you and i salute you you are a very beautiful soul thank you thank you so much mm -hmm. listen thank you so much and it's funny you say that because everybody that knows me personally know i'm a hell raiser <laughs> you know back but in the listen, day i, I all the time home. You know, I was, I was not, I was not easy. I was you not know? easy. But that's what love does. Love, love cleans the coal off you well, and turns you into a diamond. Everybody, I mean, I mean, love love, I mean, sometimes we don't even realize what yeah. it is. But I'm glad that you have transitioned into that. And I think the balance between, you know, a bit of a bit of a rogue sometimes and a bit of a prince is a nice combination. Yeah. Yes, yes. Romeo said, I'm not selling the books. He's gifting them to others. Thank you, Romeo. Thank you, man. You know, uh, Sirocco Charmin. Oh, you got, you have so many Thank people um, in your you. And remember well, Sirocco I'm so Charmin. glad. Oh. Guys, I hope you've had an amazing live of us today. I know I've had a, I've had a wonderful time. Um, Will, thank you so much for gracing us with your yeah. presence. You have been an amazing speaker. I most definitely want, I, I mean, if you ever, I mean, London, at some point, come to London. If you do, I'd like to invite you to my new TV studio, which is called Soul Talk of Silver, where people have to come in to do guest appearances. So this thing's in transition. So you never know, if you come to London, we can do that, but I definitely, in future, when I have you back on here, keep us posted with love, romance, and your books and everything else. Yeah? <laughs> Thank, you Thank you so, so much. much. It's Thank been a so pleasure. Much. There you go. Yeah? Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so well, much. Well, I speak to you quickly. Thank you so much. Feel free to exit your little X on the top. Yes, oh, that was wonderful. No, I, I see it. I see it. Thank you, guys. Bye. Love you all. All right. <laughs> okay. Wow, that was nice. Oh my God, guys, I had such, I really enjoyed myself. What, what a lovely live. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'll see who's on on Friday, if at all. I am recording somewhere else at the weekend, so it's a little bit of a, um, yeah, challenging direct at the moment. But thank you for being here. Add this page if you haven't already. Share this live. Inbox me if you want to do a live with me on any single topic, which means any topic goes as long as it flows. See you soon. <laughs>